Hello boys and girls, this is Clay of Major Disappointment Models and this is what I got next on the bench I've been uh, building these Tamiya kits so quickly I haven't been uh, filming anything and I, I probably ought to start just so I'm not so bored and so that we have more videos on uh, YouTube for our community because I know the rest of us are probably getting bored too so this is the next one I'll be starting it's the M8 Greyhound and is a light reconnaissance vehicle that uh, the Army used during World War II um, and being a former cavalry officer um, who did a lot of recon we love these recon vehicles so all right I'll be back we'll show you what's in the box so uh, let's take a look what's inside the box so first of all you have the instructions Typical to me instructions. Uh, I'm not sure when this one was printed. Oh, copyright 1998. Uh, so it's a little older. It doesn't have uh, the sprue tree map, you know, like some of the newer ones do. But it's still your typical to me a fold out with pictures, you know. Um, has some English and looks like German and French below the Japanese writing. I don't know if you guys can see that. So you got the different types of writing there. So it's no big deal. I mean, I, I like to me. It's pretty clear, you know, unlike uh, sometimes the dragon instructions tend to be fuzzy, I guess is the word. You can't tell where the part really goes based on the picture. Uh, to me, it seems to be pretty good. Now let's check out the plastic. So you got two A trees okay they're both identical um, trying to get some good light on it As you can see this one has one two three wheels and the other one has three because this is a six wheel vehicle uh, on this sprue also you have um, the leaf springs um, and there's three drive shafts so you have three sets of leaf springs to provide uh, you know, shock absorbing and stuff um, speaking of shock absorbers there's all the little shock absorbers. And then looks like you got some can't tell what size. Might be the rounds for the main gun, which is a 37 millimeter. So little handles. Looks like a torsion bar or some some kind. So various little hooks. And wheel hubs. So you get two of those, like I said. Next, we have the B sprue. And this one, uh, I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm trying to get more light on here. Let me, let me try backing it up a little. Yeah, that's not helping much. Okay. So uh, on this sprue here, when you got the observer, which is on the front of the box, I can't tell what rank it is. It's just some guy holding a binoculars. There's his face, um, and then yeah, it helps it a lot. I bet yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, you can see he's got the helmet, pistol. This is the dashboard pretty interesting and over here is you got the radio communications because it's a reconnaissance vehicle communication is very important you know they're, they're the eyes and the ears of the divisions they're out in front trying to scout out the enemy in the positions and then you got all the the drive systems there one two three pretty neat And you get the C sprue, which basically is the structure of the vehicle. So this portion is the, the bottom hull, I guess this would be the top part. This is the bottom hull, and uh, must be the front, I don't, I don't know if it's the front or the rear. It's probably the rear. So you got a rear engine vehicle. Um, you can see the oil pan of the engine, so the drivetrain goes in here. 
just the upper hull. Then you got the uh, the rear fender skirts, I guess, and the front grille. So again, typical Tamiya. It's pretty good detail in all this stuff. There, I hope you can see it. See all the rivets. I guess that's a mantlet. I don't know what it is. All right. Then you got the D sprue. So these are all. This was like a turret basket. Size of the turret. I guess some of the turret rings here. Okay. And this is the upper part of the hull where the turret goes in. And I would guess this is like the floorboard of the driver's compartment or something. I don't know. And here you got the antenna. And it's it's funny. Uh, it must be the antenna of the days. Because that looks like the same kind of antenna the Japanese had on their tanks. So, you know, the, nowadays we all have whip antennas. So, And there's the main gun. 37 millimeter. And then you got the... The Browning 30 cal, 7.62 millimeter. Yeah, little bits and pieces of here and there for the guns and whatnot. Like the front mantlet. And it's got that look like cast texture to it, so. And last but not least. They give you like a 50 cal. It's really, it's really funny. The 50 cal, it only has, uh, on board, they only had 400 rounds. And uh, each of these boxes, ammo boxes, carries approximately 100 rounds. Some of the World War II ones were 105 rounds. So you figure it's only four boxes of ammo. And for the 7.62 to 30 cal, they only had 1,500 rounds of ammo. And it's not, not a lot, you know. I mean, you burn through that really quick in an engagement. So it's surprising. And they got some nice decals. I put my decals in uh, Ziploc bags just to keep them fresh. So as you can see, or maybe you can't see, nice you can see all the US markings. I don't know, it's it's hard to do white. But over here you got all the different uh, divisions and regiments and squadrons, etc. So like uh this one is the fourth armored division, twenty fifth regiment, or twenty fifth cavalry regiment, and this is the second division, eighty second regiment. The seventh division, eighty seventh cavalry. So, and I, I may not be reading these right. It's been a long time since I read bumper numbers. Just like on this side, you got A thirty one, C thirty. Well, that's from A troop or A company, C company or C troop. And then three one would be the first vehicle in the third platoon. You know, but that's the way we used to do it. And this probably changed a lot since I've been in. So. Don't know if I'm correct. And then you, you see the red, white, and blue? Well, that's a free French. So it's pretty neat. Now this vehicle, uh, I was reading the history on it. This vehicle was used from World War II up until, I think it was the 70s or 80s. It was used in Honduras and Nicaragua. And one night it was used in Vietnam. I'm just thinking, wow, this is a pretty good vehicle. Been around a long time. The British didn't like it because they thought it was uh, under armored, especially the floorboards, uh, susceptible to uh, mines in the roads and stuff like that. So um, the crew used to put sandbags in the floor to protect themselves. So that's what's inside the box. And later on today, I'll get started on it and uh, spend my Sunday since. Uh, we don't go to church and stuff anymore because we're all isolated.
um, spend my Sunday uh, putting that together. So, you all have a good Sunday and a good rest of the month. And hopefully they'll start lifting some of these quarantines and uh, life will start getting back to normal. It's going to take a while before it does. But, uh, you know, if nothing else, I'm running out of glue. I need to get to Hobby Lobby buy some more glue and stuff. So once we start lifting the quarantines, uh, I'll be able to go out and buy some more glue. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.